Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. It's that time of the week again, and I'm here to invite you to join me tonight at the Upper Room uh, Church of God in Christ, and I'm excited about what God is going to say to you and to us and what the Lord is going to do tonight at the Upper Room during our Bible study. I have, before I uh, invite you, to give you the formal invite and do my little drum roll, I have a passage of scripture that I want to read uh, to you. The Lord put this on my heart this morning as I was driving in and I uh, began to seek the Lord as to what I would say today. Thursdays are always a big day uh, right here at the upper room. We do our taping uh, that we're doing now that you, you're you seeing. This is done on Thursdays and uh, uh, there's always Bible preparations, studies, uh, different things that are going on. It's, uh, it's a big day, but it's a marvelous day. And uh, I, I thank God for the opportunity to serve in his kingdom. But I asked the Lord, God, what would you have me to say to the people of God today? And the Lord directed my mind to Luke's gospel, chapter number 21 and uh, verses 25 through 26. He says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. I'm reading from the King James version of the Bible and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexities, the sea and the waves roaring. The sea here is uh, the source of the perplexities. He's not just talking about water, but he's talking about the things that we would see taking place in society. The perplexity of nations has to do with how nations would be disquieted, how nations would be uncertain. Look at the uncertainty that's in our world today. Look at the wars that are taking place in our world today. Look at what's happening in the streets of America. Look at the invasion of our country. Look at how our law enforcement are literally being beaten up by illegals. The things that are going on, our moral code is being turned upside down. We're calling right wrong and wrong right. We're putting good for evil and evil for good. You're talking about the sea uh, roaring. You're talking about the uh, perplexities of nations. And notice what Jesus said. He didn't just say of, of neighborhoods or of one side of town or the other side of town, but he says of nations, distress of nations. Our nation is in great distress. We're trillions of dollars in debt, debt that our uh, descendants who are not yet even born will be paying back. We are in a crisis, my friends. And the Bible says this, and men's hearts, look at this, failing them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. And he says this clearly, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We are in a time where people are being distracted. People are Feel with anxiety. People are afraid, and uh, and if you don't know the Lord, how can you not be when you when you carefully consider the things that are going on, the the threats that are taking place? We have Iran threatening to get a uh, a nuclear weapon. Uh, China, uh, Russia, China, especially uh, with their threat, <clears throat> the Russian threat. All of these things are taking place right before our eyes. And we certainly cannot leave out what has taken place uh, in the nation of Israel. So my friends, these are praying times, but these uh, disastrous times are leading up to an event. That's going to be the greatest thing that you've ever seen in your life. The Bible says, <clears throat> and then shall they see the son of man, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And he says, and when these things began to come to pass, he says this to the believer, and this is what God told me to tell you. He says, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Look up. Hallelujah. Lift up your head. Rise up. 
because your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming. The Lord is going to deliver. The Lord is soon to come. And with the things that's going on in society today, I want to encourage you to be one of those whose hearts do not fear, fail them for fear. Don't let anxiety and depression set in. Hey, sometimes you got to turn the newspaper, the news, the news on the television. You got to turn it off. And Brother Gary, man, I tell you, I'm looking for my cell phone. People are getting, you know, everything is being broadcasted to you. The whole world is in the palm of your hand. And these things vibrate. They give off uh, signals to let you know. There's a new world. There's, a, there's another story today in today's world. When you get up in the morning, many times we reach for the cell phone to see what's going on before we get on our, our knees and pray. Sometimes, my friends, don't read the newspapers. Most of the major uh, uh, news networks today are, are liberal anyhow. <laughs> you would do yourself a favor to sometimes shut out the noise. Get away from all of that. And get in a quiet place and talk to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. I tell you what, he's the greatest upper and the greatest downer that exists. He's the greatest tranquilizer that, that one can buy. Praise the Lord. And you don't have to pay for him with money. He, he knows how to soothe your heart and your mind. I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to someone. And, and when, uh, when this ends, I want you to go and I want you to pray. And I want you to say, Lord, Lord, calm the rage that's in me. God, calm the sea that is taking place in my life. And why are you talking to the Lord? Acknowledge, yes, Lord, there are many things that are happening that uh, that will trouble me. Yeah, I'm not saying that you're not justified in being troubled. I'm not saying that you're imagining things. But what I am saying, with the situations being real and the multitude of things being uh, that are being th that are, that are thrown at you, I'm here to tell you that the God of the Bible knows how to fix you in the midst of that situation and then to fix the situation. But ch take it from me. If he does like he normally uh, do, he'll probably fix you first before he fixes the, situ the situation. He'll probably give you peace and give you calm. And you'll, you'll, you'll experience that peace which surpasses all understanding. With, with the storms of life going on around you and the craziness that's taking place in our streets and up being down and down is up and we redefine marriage and, and there are those, I was in Virginia yesterday and marching with some of the finest Christian people uh, that I've ever met uh, and, uh, and it was an honor to march and to stand with the governor and to be there with the lieutenant governor as we march to fight to save the lives of the unborn. We're all, we were all ecstatic and excited and overwhelmed with joy when Roe v. Wade was overturned, but all that meant was that the battle would intensify and intensify it has. But you know what? Nothing is too hard for God. We serve a God who fights just as well in the valley as he does on the mountaintop. If you don't believe me, ask the Syrians, ask King Ben Haddad. After they got smoked in the mountains, his advisors told him, well, let's fight, let's fight the next battle against, uh, against uh, Israel. Let's fight them uh, in the valleys because their God can fight on the mountains, but their God is not a good warrior in the valley. God said, send some young men out there. Send some inexperienced warriors. Send some inexperienced warriors in front of uh, the rest of the army. And I'll take young men and whoop them in the valley to show them that I'm God in the valley and I'm God on the mountaintop. And I want to tell you, whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, the Lord God of the Bible is God. God, and he will fight for you and give you victory every time. Now, Brother Gary, I'm about to feel something. I'm, I'm, almost, I'm, I'm almost tuned up and ready to send for Brother Rocky or somebody, and we're going to have some church right now, but we're going to save it. We're going to save it. 
for tonight. Now, unless the Lord speaks to me differently, I won't be speaking from any text that I've given you today, but there is something that the Lord has put on my heart that I want to share with you uh, tonight. So I want to take the time to invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. That's right. Bible study. I'm meeting people all over the country when I travel. People doing the little road. Bible study. Bible study. The whole point of it is we're excited about the Bible. So many Christians today have, have set, Brother Gary, that the Bible aside. How are you going to be a preacher and a believer and not read the Bible? And I'll say this to you as we go off. Your knowledge of the God of the Bible is directly tied to your knowledge of the Bible. I'm here to tell you that if all you know about the Bible is two scriptures, then that's all you know about the God of the Bible. So my friends, let's get busy learning about the God of the Bible. Praise God. Studying the words of Jesus Christ. Someone said the other day, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm going to be like Jesus. I, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking. I'm just going to live it. It was a coward. Uh, someone who's afraid to stand up. The truth is, the Bible records much more of what Jesus said than it does of what Jesus said. Uh, uh, did. Read it. Read the Gospels. Read all the sermons. Read all the things that he said. And yes, it records his miracles. And yes, it records that he lived a sinless life. And yes, the word of God records that Christ died on the cross and rose again. But what if we extrapolate? What if we removed from the Gospels all that Jesus actually said the volumes would be much much smaller and we would know so much less we would know so little about the Lord Jesus Christ so God is calling us to do what Jesus did he's calling us to speak up Jesus said to testify to the truth this way he told uh, uh, Pilate to testify to the truth is the reason that I have come. And God have called us to testify to God's truth. So I'll see you tonight. We're going to study God's truth. And the Lord's going to bless us real good. Join me here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ.